In Chapter 13, we are looking at partnerships. Partnerships obviously have a little different equity section because we don't have stockholders and we're not paying out dividends. Rather, we have individual partners. How the partners share profits and losses is based on their partnership agreement, which they all agree to in the formation of the partnership. In this particular example, the a partnership agreement has components for salary, a bonus, interest, and then the remainder split equally. Now, how that is set up is based on the roles and responsibilities of the partner, and we'll see that in a minute here as we do an allocation. One other thing to note is that while we use salary and interest on capital as a way to allocate the profits, note these are not the same as salary and interest that we have in a corporation. They are not deductible for tax purposes, and they are not considered in calculating net income. These are strictly a means of allocating the profit or loss of the partnership. So based on the agreement, Johnson has a base salary of 50, Larson of 60. So that's our first step. Then the second step is to do the bonus. Well, the bonus calculation here is a tiny bit strange because it's bonus based on the net income after the bonus. So this formula is similar to what's given in the text, slightly modified, and I would recommend that you use the one we're using here in the example for your homework. It'll make it a little easier for you. If I do the math here and the algebra, the bonus ends up being 20000 for Cragen, and so we put his bonus in. Now we've allocated 130000 of the total profit. The next step is the interest. In this case, you do not have to calculate the average capital balance that's given for you, so we simply take 10% of that average balance. Now, why do we use average balance rather than ending or beginning? Well, average balance is a better reflection of what the partner really committed in terms of resources to the partnership for the whole year, rather than being able to manipulate the number potentially by putting money in at the beginning or end of the year or when the measuring period is. This measures consistency throughout the year. So after we allocate the interest, we still have 69000 left to allocate of profit. So we're going to take that 69000 and divide it out equally to each of the three partners because that's their final allocation method based on their partnership agreement. And we've now allocated the full 220 of income, 77 to Johnson, 85.5 to Larson, Cragen gets 57.5. And you should be able to see from this allocation that it looks like Johnson and Larson are doing the bulk of the day-to-day -day operations and receive a salary for that. Well, Cragen is the one with the higher capital invested, greater risk, and is also receiving a bonus. Bonus may be because he's the one doing partnership building, client building, resource management, etc. Hard to say exactly without more details here, but you can tell from the bonus and the higher investment that he's the one taking the greater risk potentially, but also may have the greater return. So that's what happens with the 220. Now what happens when we have a loss in the second example? Johnson and Larson still receive their salaries, but there is no bonus, obviously for Cragen, since you can't have a bonus on income if there is no income. And it tells us here that this was done allocated assuming a priority system is not followed. So we're going to go ahead and put in the full interest that we calculated from the last one. You'll see now that we've allocated 131000 but we actually have a loss. Well, what are we going to do with that? Well, if we take what we've allocated as an absolute amount with an absolute amount of the loss, we get 165000 and if we divide that based on their profit and loss sharing percentages here of one-third, they each are going to also take, in addition to the other items, a hit of 55000 and now our total allocation equals the total loss of the partnership, and we see where Cragen does have that significant risk, losing out on 40500 Then in the last example, we still have our salaries like we did before. Now we're back in an income situation, so we're going to calculate a bonus for Cragen. In this case, the bonus is based on 132000 of income. So his bonus 
becomes 12,000 and we'll put that into the allocation. Now this one, you'll notice 122, they only have 10,000 left and they use a priority system so we can't allocate above and beyond the 132 that's available. So we really only have 10,000 left to allocate. Well how do we allocate that? We're going to allocate it based on the percentages of what they would have received. So Johnson would have received 4,000 in interest of a total 21,000 paid to all the partners in interest if there was sufficient income times the 10,000 that's actually available to get Johnson's allocation of 1905. Larson would have received 2,500 of the total 21,000 in interest so his percentage is 1190 and then for Cragen we would have paid 14.5 in interest of the total 21,000 in interest so Cragen's allocation is 6905 and you'll see that we allocated a total of 132,000. So that should demonstrate the idea of profit and loss allocations and then these final numbers in each case would be the amounts that actually are credited or debited depending on the direction to their partner capital account.